So thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Lauren Emanacker and I'm with the Vail Valley Partnership. We're the Regional Chamber of Commerce here in the Vail Valley. And today we are definitely discussing the engaging your customers in the new normal. And this is a very applicable topic right now. So we're so glad that you were able to join us. Um, I am going to introduce our speaker. We're really excited to have Anthony Smith here today. He is the Regional Director of Spot On and he has more than 15 years of experience in this payment landscape. So today he's gonna to share with us how businesses can effectively engage with their customers, which is more, than, more important than ever right now during this COVID-19 climate. So thank you for joining us today, Anthony, and I will hand it over to you. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, you know, I guess before I jump in and tell you a million things about uh, engaging your customers in the new normal, a brief introduction. Um, so I've been in Colorado now for about 15 years. Uh, when I first moved here, I lived in Frisco, Colorado. So I understand a little bit of the lingo from the mountain area and uh, unfortunately had to move back to the real world to start raising a family for a while. So, um, you know, really am excited to be able to be here and share with you guys. So thank you for having me. Um, to kind of give you some backstory on Spot On as a company and kind of who we are, what we represent. Spot On is a customer engagement company and we specialize in helping businesses communicate with their customers. We do this by focusing on programs like loyalty, digital marketing, review management, really any way that you can communicate with the customer, that's what we do. We're not a new company, we've been around for eight plus years. We do have an office here locally in the Denver Tech Center and we also have three or four sales partners uh, that work in and around the Eagle Vale Valley. So um, again, thanks for having me excited to share. I'm not quite sure what that uh, stuff is on the um, side of the screen there, but we're just going to pretend that it's not there. Um, give me just a second. I apologize. Okay, so um, Spot On is an omni-channel solution. What that means is we, we help businesses with everything from payment processing, appointments, loyalty, any type of way you can engage with your customer. We've got programs and products that help do that. So as we kind of navigate this conversation today, I wanted to make sure you guys understand that there are solutions available to some of these challenges we're all facing, and we'll touch base more on that and send a follow-up email afterwards. Um, today, the topic, as Lauren had mentioned, is engaging your customers in the new normal. And clearly, the new normal is a crazy one. And I think as we continue to progress throughout this summer, we'll see things and restrictions lift and change. But we at our company feel it's very important to stay ahead of this sort of thing, to be educated on ways that you can communicate and stay engaged with your customers while still adhering to some of the new social distancing kind of protocols. Let's see, um, today's agenda. So today I'm gonna to cover a variety of different pro topics. Uh, one is how to properly incentivize repeat business, managing your customer data for optimal results, trends in online shopping and ordering, and also regulatory exceptions associated with payment acceptance, and lastly, managing your online reputation effectively. These are all paramount, I believe, in you know navigating the new normal and being sure that we are doing the best that we can to help our customers uh, you know, still enjoy our products and services. Um, I think it goes without saying that uh, small businesses are the absolute fabric of our society. Small businesses comprise so much of what who we are as an individual, who we are as a state, and really the, the Vale Valley in general. It's the lifeblood of the economy. Some of the challenges that we think are really facing small businesses right now are developing proper social distancing protocol, creating online shopping experiences, reducing overhead, uh, streamlining processes, you know, that loyal customer base, of course, is important as well, driving revenue and keeping your customers engaged. So today my plan is to try to help as much as I can or to shed some insight on how we can navigate some of these challenges. So customer engagement, what does customer engagement mean? Um, a common term that's used a lot these days by myself and my staff is buyer journey. I think that we are all consumers by nature, whether we own businesses or not, as we step into a business or we step into an establishment, it's all about that buyer journey or customer journey. I use Whole Foods as an example sometimes because when you walk in, there's always this beautiful bouquet of flowers. And I think that that resonated with me as I started navigating this customer engagement topic. Our job as proprietors is to 
provide an experience. And if we're able to provide that experience as an enjoyable one, a memorable one, I think that that's what creates those long lasting customer relationships. So the first thing that I think is very pertinent, properly incentivizing repeat business. Um, I think we can all remember the punch cards of yesteryear. I remember when I was younger, there was a coffee stand that I would go to in high school and I had this punch card. It was this piece of paper that I always seemed to lose. And just when I thought that I was getting to a point where I might get that free cup of coffee, sure enough, I couldn't find it and it was probably buried underneath my seat. So what we've done now is we've migrated to the ability to have a digital loyalty program. I know a lot of businesses that have this digital loyalty functionality that makes it A, so we're not losing that card, but B, it allows us to digitally monitor and track that information. Having the ability to incentivize your customers to spend more money, visit more often, absolutely paramount. Um, you know, a good example is as we look at restaurants reopening. As these restaurants reopen, we know that the percentage or the capacity that we're able to have is likely going to be limited. Maybe it's 25%, maybe it's 50%. So when we look at digital loyalty as a tool to help that 25% spend 25 or 50% more, I think it's a very pertinent topic. And we'll open up for some questions here in a second about some ideas that we have used or will be using. But incentivizing customers with digital loyalty, extremely important. Um, also, growing your customer base through digital referral programs. Growing a customer base is really paramount, especially where we look at the Vale Valley. Having the customer data and, and growing this digitally um, is an awesome thing. Every Everybody loves to be rewarded for referring customers. So that's the name of business, at least in my business. I get business through other customers that speak highly of my organization. So having a digital referral program is something that is very important as well. Um, Customer retention, VIP programs. We've all been to a maybe a brewery or your favorite wine and cheese place that has an amazing VIP program. Some places even have you know a cup where you can get your name on it. They hang on the wall. Having this type of program uh, migrate to a digital fashion is very very important when we talk about incentivizing repeat business and growing that online kind of reputation. Um, creating exclusive discounts for locals. Um, again, you know I, I never lived in Vail, but I did live in Frisco and I know that the importance of having the ability to have a local kind of thing or program available is important not only for you as a business but also for the community as a you know tight-knit community we want to be rewarding those people that live and breathe in our businesses those people that are there every day providing value and also just to come by and have a conversation here and there so we do think it's important to have these local customers and the ability to incentivize them in a different capacity um, of course of course, email is always a good thing for customers that maybe you have not seen in a while. Um, programs that are available out there have the ability to notify you when somebody hasn't been into your business in a month or a week or a year, depending upon the type of business that you're in. So using email to win back customers can also be a very valuable tool. And leveraging user-generated content. Um, I love this one. I've always been some, uh, some, somewhat of a foodie. So when you take a picture of something at a restaurant and you post that onto social media, that is such a powerful tool, not only for the individual posting it, but equally as important for the business. If you have a cafe and somebody comes in and takes a picture of a beautiful cup of espresso that they made, you should be working to share that on your own social channels. So when we talk about properly incentivizing repeat business, I think that you know it really comes down to the word loyalty. And small businesses and their customer loyalty programs are extremely important in today's new normal. How we reward people based on how they shop at our business is, is how we survive kind of trying times. It's how we get more people visiting more often and hopefully spending more money. And I think as we navigate the new normal, having a strategy in place that helps you understand and, and really utilize these types of tools and program is absolutely important. It, it's really a three-step process. First, we've got to get customers to enroll. We have to train our employees, our staff, and ourselves to prompt customers to sign up for some sort of loyalty or incentive kind of program. We have to offer, in some capacity, a, a reward. 
5% off for enrolling in our loyalty program or a free cup of coffee, whatever that looks like. It'll vary by business, but getting customers to enroll is extremely important part to the process. Really from then, from there, it's about keeping them coming back, offering products and services and incentivizing them. Maybe it's a Tuesday and it's slow. Having the ability to pump a message to your loyal customer base that's enrolled into this program is a really beautiful thing for your business. Maybe you purchased a surplus of one ingredient or one item that you really need help pushing. Well, you can offer this item at a discount. It's a much more efficient tool than you know putting a sign in the window that says, hey, 10% off this or that. Lastly, it's all all about automation and the way that we automate this process uh, very similar to you know a Safeway uh, where you enter your phone number or a Kroger and you enter your phone number rewarded based on how you shop having a, a plan to, to reward folks and how to grow that sort of business mentality I think is really important so really I'd love to open up the floor for a second and, and really discuss if somebody has any questions or comments or concerns on customer loyalty and, and how we can properly incentivize repeat business so Lauren if, if you you'd like to maybe open the floor, see if there's any questions or comments or concerns? Yeah, if anyone has anything, if you raise your hand, I will definitely unmute you. For those of you that are new to Zoom, there's an option to raise your hand. I think it floats and lives somewhere near the bottom. Yep, it should be right near the bottom, or if you open participants, you can do that as well. But we do have one question through the chat, Anthony. Okay, perfect. So, Question comes from the bookworm of Edwards, the local bookstore here, and it's how do we convert the feeling of all the things we used to do, so like the customer appreciation party and those type of things, how do we convert those to kind of this day and age? You know, I think that's a great question. Um, you know, I think it's uh, the, the answer, uh, at least in my eyes, is very similar to what we're doing now. Um, it reminds me of a story. There's a winery that I work with out of Canyon City, and this winery is very well known in the state of Colorado. And we developed a program, and we reached out to local businesses and local consumers and had a Wine Down Wednesday appreciation kind of digital Zoom call. Now, with a bookstore, it, it'll become a little different, but I think there's a lot of ideas we could do. We could, we could market a a book club we could talk about you know book of the month you can host digital uh, you know meetings such as this to have kind of a round robin conversation I think as we look at developing a program that, that encompasses loyalty with that it's all about getting that loyal customer base that you've probably had for years and years and years to participate and I think you do that by incentivizing or giving away a free book or a free cup of coffee to a local restaurant and kind of cross marketing at times but I do think that today's digital age and what we're doing right now on this Zoom call is a phenomenal idea for any business. As the bookstore, we would love to be able to help drive some people to an online discussion to talk about the book of the month, the book of the week, or you know, some ideas and, and get those ideas from your customer as well. Hopefully that's a helpful answer. Yeah, and then um, let me unmute one other folks who has the hand raised here. Uh, let's see. That is actually not working. Um, Anthony, would you be able to unmute? Yeah, I think it, it let me. I think, uh, and Tony, uh, please share your question with the group. Hey, good morning, everyone. Um, when you talk about loyalty programs, uh, you know, it, what I see obviously great loyalty programs uh, that focuses on airline companies or even what you're saying about um, uh, supermarkets, but uh, what right there, what you have is you have a, a limited uh, competitive setting. You have uh, just an, a limited number of airlines, or in the case of a, a supermarket, a limited amount of of, of, of of supermarket brands in 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 your area. But um, in in our case, in the restaurant world, um, you have a very uh, extensive um, competitive setting. You have quite a few restaurants that you're competing with. Uh, or you're sharing the market with more, I'd rather say. Um, and and obviously people don't, I mean, people do have certain loyalty to restaurants, but they also like to, to go to different places depending on their mood and, and, and day. How do, you, how do you handle that? Because I see the loyalty programs working extremely well for, with but when you have that limited competitive set. But when you have such an extensive one, that's, uh, to me, I see it a, a lot more challenging. 
Well, I love this question, first of all, because I love to eat at restaurants as well. And I think that as soon as this band is over, I will be at every restaurant I can possibly be at as many times as feasible. But I think that it really comes down to that, um, you know, loyalty driven brand, right? Um, you know, I'm a guy that loves seafood, as an example. I love sushi. I love clams. You're making me hungry with this question. But I think that what we have to do is focus on core products. Focus on something that separates yourself from every other restaurant. Let me ask you, and I venture to assume, your restaurant does have something that differentiates itself from other restaurants in the Valley. Is that, is that correct? Uh, it should be this way, yep. <laughs> Perfect. So, so what I think what we do is we have to highlight those things that are, are make you special, right? Like an, you had mentioned an airline or a grocery store, and I use it as an example because it's widely familiar, but imagine, if you will, that you had this one dish that everybody loves and it's one of your top sellers. So we highlight that product. We use that product as our kind of cornerstone. We, you know, buy one, get one free is a cheesy example, but we could, we could really expand and say, okay, for anybody that shares a picture of this one delicacy on the their social media and on ours will offer you 5% off. Oh, by the way, join our loyalty program, buy it five times, get the sixth one free. I think that this is how we really drive business um, in a loyalty program. Now what you've got is that customer data. Imagine my friend, if you could see that I came in and I had the steam clamps 10 times over the next month, that's a really good tool to have versus somebody who might've had that same entree five times. But I hope that that's been a helpful answer. I think we've got a couple of more questions. Lauren, are there a few more questions I think I saw pop up there? I have not seen any more pop up. Um, I did have one question though on behalf of the small businesses kind of here. And what if you, you know, right now are working with a very limited staff and don't feel like you necessarily have the capacity to do a loyalty program? Are there any just, you know, a few small kind of tips or tricks to make it something easy to implement? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think without question, it's, it's, it's a very feasible thing to implement some sort of customer reward program. Whether you're a very new business, a small business, or a large business, having a, a, an incentivization program is, is absolutely important. So whether it's a paper, uh, you know, loyalty thing that you keep track of by yourself and you're not stepping into the digital thing, whether it's a social media check-in here and there, I think it's very important to highlight our asset and our asset is our customers. So regardless of the size, shape, or scope of your business, having a plan in place and discussing it maybe with other businesses in the area and leaning on some resources that are available through organizations like the VVP, I think is a really great place to start. Any okay, other questions? Thanks. Cool. Um, well, I'll go ahead and move forward, but I thank you for the time and questions. I, I love the questions. Please keep them coming as we go throughout this presentation. Let's see. So using your customer data for optimal results. Um, as a customer engagement company, we have really predicated our growth strategy on helping businesses be more forward thinking. Um, you know, coming from a business owned kind of family, my family has owned businesses for, for my whole life. I have a, a kind of an intimate understanding of the change in guard, if you will. In yesteryear, there was not this type of technology or this need to do it, but I believe and we firmly believe as a society, especially with this new normal in place, Capturing, using, and, and, and being uh, responsible with your customer data is absolutely imperative. It's all about that buyer journey I talked about at the beginning of the call. It's about how I feel, the experience that I have as I come in and I come out. And when we fast forward and we think about next ski season, um, I'm an epic uh, pass holder, 10 years, love the Vale Valley, love coming up there. And, I, and, it, and it, it, it's crazy to me to think about the number of tourists that you guys have that come through your business, whether you're a restaurant, whether you're a bookstore, whether you're a hotel, whatever that looks like, but you have this kind of, um, you know, ever changing, uh, you know, I guess, customer or client base. So making sure that we focus on that customer experience and even more important, having that data. Imagine if every single person that ever came to your restaurant, for an example, over the last two ski seasons, imagine if you could, with the press of a button, say, hey, sorry, we had to, you know, end the ski season short this year, uh, you know, 10% off all our loyal customers for a gift card. We can't wait to see you next season. That's a really good way to drive some additional 
revenue and to keep in contact. Because as a guy that comes to the mountain, I have my places that I love to go. And I'm sad that I wasn't able to finish my season as much as I wanted to. But if I receive that email, if I receive that, that marketing, text message marketing, there's a lot of different things you can do. But that really, I think, improves that customer experience. And into the new normal, I think it, it, it really pushes them and helps your business grow revenue. Because if I got an email from one of the many restaurants that I love in the area that said, hey, we really appreciate your business over the years. We're forced to be closed until May, but please do know we're offering gift cards at a 10% discount for our local you know, people and our, our you know, VIP program, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm probably going to do that because I know that I'm going to return to the Vail Valley. I can't wait to return to that. So that customer experience, I think, is paramount. Um, refining marketing strategies with tailored email deals and social media. Um, it's a new normal, and it's been slowly becoming this new normal for the last several years. Maybe not as it pertains to the pandemic, but when we talk about digital marketing, when we talk about the need for mobile appointments, when we talk about online ordering, there's some statistics that I'll share with you here in a second, but it's mind-blowing. As we look at the new customer, you know, there's the, 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 old, the, the good old boys that have been coming to the mountain area for their entire lives, but when we look about surviving this next kind of, uh, you know, millennium, the millennial group, I think it's important that everyone adapt some technologies or at least some strategies to try to communicate to that group. If you're not communicating to that group, there's somebody else that is. So having these tailored emails that reward people and, hey, thanks for being a loyal customer. We see that you've been here five times or 10 times over the last year. Thank you. That's something that simple is a really good strategy for you to help grow your brand. Um, the next uh, line item here is make data-driven business decisions. Clearly, you guys, more than most areas of the country, are very, very familiar with timing. We all know that mud season comes once a year, right? So to have this mud season, you guys understand that there's certain times that, uh, you know, the, the business booms. Spring break. I know every year I'm on the mountain when Texas takes spring break. And I think all of us that are from the area can remember how this is. It is just inundated. Well, to, to have the specific data on that and to know that, okay, my, you know, I sold X product X percent more during this week allows us to make better data-driven business decisions. And I think that's very important. Clearly, that's going to boost sales and optimize pricing. So I think it's important to gather and use your customer data for optimal results. Really, I think to break that down, there's three main marketing strategies that anybody can do. Whether you have a digital loyalty company, whether you have your own loyalty program in-house, really it's predicated on three different kind of basic marketing strategies. And I think one is email. Email still to this day has one of the highest returns for any marketing, especially if it comes from a brand that you know and trust. Now, I'm not talking these annoying COVID-19 emails that we've all been getting for the last several weeks, but developing a thank you email, developing a Mother's Day email, having these types of campaigns is an absolute necessity to keep you top of mind. Because like our business, it's about touches. And however many times you can touch that customer is really what drives that customer to keep returning. Deals. Deals are, you know, time predicated offerings, you know, for Mother's Day specials or Taco Tuesday specials or whatever that looks like. Uh, the top one, I think, is, is such an important statistic. 40% of people say email deals are a big incentive for making purchases. I can think of my uh, epic pass comes to mind. Every year I get an email from Vail Resorts that says, hey, put $50 down now and receive X amount of discount. I think that that goes without saying, and we as small business owners can all adapt some of that technology. And of course, social media. Facebook is the most commonly used social media channel, and 86% of small businesses uh, utilize this to try to incentivize or, or, or speak to their client base. So before we move on, again, I'd like to kind of open it up for some questions to talk about, you know, gathering data, managing data, how to utilize data, if there are any questions. Lauren, you see any hands going up or uh, chats in the chat box? I do not quite yet. Oh, nobody. There's got to be one good question out there about maybe deal campaigns or social media, anything of that nature I can help with. If not, I'll go ahead and move forward. All right, we'll move right along then. Um, I love this topic and I love this section of this presentation, your online reputation and why it matters. Uh, these are the statistics I was talking about before. 91%, 91% of millennials trust online reviews as much as friends and family. And I'm gonna just stop that. You guys can feel free to read those yourself, but your reputation online is absolutely paramount and managing that reputation can be tedious. 
right? Having to log into Facebook and Google and all of these different mediums is, is, is painstakingly slow. And sometimes in some cases, it costs a lot of money. We, you know, really try to help businesses understand that it's not as complicated as it sounds. And there are tools that make it a lot easier. But if you're not managing your online presence, if you're not responding to every review that you get, both positive and negatively, you're really hurting your brand because the people that mind that get interaction. And like I talked about a second ago, it's really all about having that interaction. As many touches as you can with your customers is a very, very helpful thing. Um, you know, another one that I really like is the bottom one is customers could spend 31% more on a business with great reviews. Personally, whether it's a restaurant, whether it's a hotel, whether it's a bookstore, a retail store, I, as a consumer, I check these sort of things. I've been in stores before and, and maybe thought, hey, I really might want to buy this, but I'll pull that up and look at it on my phone. And maybe not all of your client base does, but I think it's about thinking and, and focusing on that new normal or that new client base. Understand that your, your clients are going to change and grow and, and, and that's what you want. You want to grow that business, but your online reputation is extremely important when it comes to navigating the new normal. Um, I think these main three things are, are what we, we really try to press on and what we talk to people about more than anything is claiming your business pages. You would be absolutely surprised and there's likely some people on this call that have yet to go claim all of their pages. Maybe you've got a Facebook, maybe you've got a Yelp, but uh, there's a vast majority of businesses that don't have all of these and I think it's very important. Was there somebody that had a question? I heard a little bit of background noise. Looks like maybe somebody just came off mute. Oh, we do have actually one question, if you don't mind, quick yeah, about the social media, kind of going back to that piece. Um, what would you say are some of the best tips for creating kind of that genuine social media following when you don't have an in-store presence right now, so you can't actually ask people, you know, in the store to follow you during the checkout process like you maybe normally would? I like this, and, and we've had some really inventive things happen in, in, in our business. Of course, we deal with thousands of small businesses all across the country, but I think what you do is you lean on your community. I think if you don't have a very large or strong social presence currently, what you do is talk to other business owners, communicate with the Vail Valley Partnership, communicate with other uh, associations, and leverage their customer base. And I, and I think that a, a good example, we, we have a, a sales partner that works in Colorado Springs, and a bunch of retail businesses were closed. What she did is she reached out, this, uh, this sales partner of ours, and she went and talked to these retail businesses, and she negotiated a deal with a lot of restaurants. So she would get a coupon from the retail business and put it in the online ordering program uh, or the delivery food for these businesses, therefore driving some traffic to social media, like this business on Facebook for 10% off future purchases, stay local, shop local, be an Amazon fighter, you know, things of this nature. So I think that there are ways to do it. It's really about getting creative. Whoever the question was from I'd love to chat with you a little bit more about how we can help you come up with some solutions that can help make that a little bit easier any other questions Lauren nope that's the only one I see right now so. okay great um, you know again to, to tie up the, the review management piece um, Managing your online presence is so important, especially right now. As we navigate consumer habits, as we look to reopening the state for all types of businesses and restaurants and all of these things, consumers are going to be more leery than they ever were before. People are going to trust positive reviews from their peers more than they trust marketing statements or more than they trust anything. So the truth is, is, is although this is sell, you know, frequently overlooked, I can promise you that from a guy that works with a lot of businesses, as we navigate this, your online presence and managing those reviews are super important. Talk to people, have conversations, ask questions on your social media pages, ask people what their favorite book is and, and try to spark conversation, lean on other businesses in the community to help them share that, have friends and family be involved in that conversation because the more that you converse online with people in general, the higher your rating or the higher your view is from those that might not be so familiar with your business. So um, that's kind of the topic on review management. Um, I, I don't know if there's any questions or comments or concerns as it pertains to that. Properly managing your online reviews. Not that I see so far. The one piece I would say and jump in is um, 
you know, we have seen some of our members and some small businesses in the area who have, you know, like you were saying, kind of partnered up or have done a giveaway together where, you know, if you follow or if people like all three of the pages, you know, they've done kind of a giveaway of an item from each store and things like that. So there is, yeah. I've seen some things going around. So I wanted to make sure to share that. Yeah, you know, and I think it's so relative uh, for for people on this call. Where you live is local. You all support each other so very much, and, and that's why I'm here and why, why we're all on this call is we want to do what we can to help one another. It's about this local feel. It's about this local presence and, and, and being there for your neighbor, and I think that as, you know, to mimic what Lauren said, leaning on your neighbors and, and coming to a plan together, I think is, is really the way to go to, if you don't have this type of presence or you've never had it, that's how you get where you need to go, at least a good place to start from. So I'll go ahead and move forward. I get these notifications, Lauren. It looks like somebody's popping into the chat box, but I'm not really sure if that was what that was or not. Not that I've seen here. Okay. Um, all right, so um, this is the next topic, online shopping, online ordering, and appointments. Um, I think that this is probably the most pertinent and, and kind of top of mind for a lot of businesses that aren't open or aren't able to operate at a normal capacity. Um, you know, online shopping for retail, online ordering for restaurants that are forced to do takeout or curbside, and, and also appointment booking. We've been having a lot of interesting conversations, uh, you know, internally here at Spot On about this new normal and how do you adapt to this social distancing? you know, kind of uh, requirement. I think that the, the I read earlier the Eagle County kind of stipulations, no more than 10 people in a business at a time, clearly, uh, you know, six feet apart at distance. And I think it goes a step further than putting little, you know, taped X's on the floor. We've been talking a lot about the application of an appointment software that allows you and your customers to feel comfortable knowing that they have enough space within your business. Typically, appointments modules are utilized for salons or, you know, personal trainers, things of this nature, but we've actually seen a significant uptick in the adaption of appointment software for retail businesses. Imagine if, you know, I want to go get a pair of shoes. I need to go get a pair of shoes and I go walk to the shoe store and there's a line to get in. That's not a really feasible shopping option for me. I have family. I have a lot of daughter. My, my grandfather's 75 years old, so I can't be in public to that nature. And I know that maybe right now, because we're kind of in a pseudo mud season, that might not apply. But as we look to opening back up, imagine a retail business where I could go to their website or to their Facebook page, and I could say that, look, they let 10 people in every hour. I can book an appointment to go and shop in that business. So there's a lot of really great tools and tips and tricks that people have been using to navigate this new normal. Online ordering. Online ordering has been such a helpful thing for small businesses. Spot On owns another company called Spot On Restaurants. We have a very robust restaurant portfolio. We work with restaurants hand in hand, and um, we have seen restaurants find a way. That's been a common word or a common statement, you know, finding a way. And I think developing and maintaining an online ordering presence is extremely important. The ability for me, as the foodie I mentioned before, to go to that favorite restaurant I talked about and to be able to really say, you know, here's what I want to order and not have to worry about going in or even calling over the phone makes that buyer journey or buyer experience that much more enjoyable. I think it's absolutely paramount that businesses, restaurants especially, implement an online ordering solution because I, I know that you guys don't have it there, but Grubhub, Uber Eats, all these things, they're just a nightmare for small businesses. Having the ability to manage that internally and not lose X amount of percentage has been a very important thing for us in our portfolio of restaurants. And online shopping, Amazon Fighter is the word that we use quite a bit. It's a marketing campaign that we ran in, in the Midwest a while back. But being able to supply your your customers with some sort of online shopping experience. Maybe you're a retail business and you sell Christmas ornaments and maybe you're a restaurant and you have, you know, this one specific seasonal item. I mean, there's a thousand ways we could take this, but having the ability to provide an online shopping experience in some capacity, I think is really important and also challenging. I think a lot of people that don't have that online shopping experience are afraid of it because it does seem overbearing, but there are a lot of 
businesses, local businesses, members of the Vale Valley Partnership that can help you adapt to this at a very, very low cost and a very easy kind of onboarding process. Some of the stats there are, you know, mind blowing. Uh, 82% of millennials prefer to book an appointment online. That's a really big statistic. 76% of clients use mobile devices to book appointments. 60% of U.S. consumers order delivery or takeout once a week. This has become my new normal. Uh, I'm a family guy. I've got, you know, a 16-month-old daughter and a 14-year-old son. And when you've worked a long day, that online ordering thing, man, I, I tell you, it's a very important thing for me. So, you know, as we move on to the next slide, I, I really want to take some time and, and, and stress, if you don't have this capability or you've been worried about it or it's a challenge to try to figure it out, reach out to those that have it. Call your local businesses. Reach out to the Vale Valley Partnership. Look for resources within your community because I don't think it's as scary as a lot of people think that it is. Um, uh, again, to, to touch on the websites, online ordering and appointments, um, I, I'd like to open it up for questions. Uh, at this point, I don't want to be repetitive and talk more about websites, online ordering appointments. Is there anybody that has any questions? Uh, maybe somebody that has, has an online ordering experience or anything of that nature that I could help answer. No questions? Oh, right. But if you if you do have one or if you think of one, feel free to put it in the chat box or raise your hand and we can definitely circle back. Yeah, totally. Um, again, you know, I think it's just about adapting to that new normal and understanding that there are tools that are very important for your business. And, and if you have those tools or don't know how to get those tools, let somebody know and reach out to the community. Um, lastly, this is a kind of topic that talks about regulations and they're associated with payment acceptance. I know that nobody likes to talk about their payment processing, so I won't bore you with slide upon slide, but there are programs that are available and really taken advantage of by a lot of businesses within your community that allow businesses to offset the cost for accepting credit cards. This is completely compliant in all 50 states, and what it does is it offers a discount to customers who pay by cash. So imagine if you were able to offset up to 95% in some cases of the fees that are associated with accepting payments. Payments. Um, it's a big burden, especially for you folks and where your businesses are located. I would say that if I had to assume, and I don't know the legit statistic, but 50, 60, maybe even 70% of your annual revenue, I would assume comes from uh, travelers and from tourists in a lot of capacity. So having a compliant program that allows you the ability to offset some of that cost is a really, really good program. And we have this program called Spot on Assist. I won't dive into the details, but if you're interested, please don't hesitate to reach out. And we can help you understand how to offset some of those costs, especially during today's kind of unique normal environment. Um, there's five reasons that really we look at that businesses use spot on. 90% of consumers read online reviews before visiting a business. 71% of millennials prefer to book appointments online using their phone. And I could go on and on. But I really think that if you're interested in any capacity of any of the topics that we've talked about, we're very lucky to be able to provide these at a, at, at a deep discount to Vale Valley Partners. Um, we offer marketing reviews, virtual terminals, business dashboards, mobile applications. We offer loyalty, appointments, websites, online ordering, gift cards. Our business specializes in customer engagement. We help businesses like you communicate with your customer in any which way, shape, or form. Whether it's a loyalty program, a website, gift cards, online ordering, we can help you guys navigate that water. Nothing that we do comes with a contract and nothing that we do costs anything up front. Um, I would like to introduce you guys. There's one person on the call. Her name is Dana Erickson. Dana Erickson is a longtime, uh, you know, uh, I guess, member of the Vale Valley Partnership. But Dana, I'll let you kind of make an introduction. Yeah, hi, thanks, Anthony, and hello, everyone. I can't say I'm long-term resident. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't say I'm a long-term resident. I've been here for seven winters. So love and time in the Vale Valley spot on is just a blast. I'm a small business owner myself. So I'm uh, really excited about um, helping you all grow and getting creative. And I would love to brainstorm. I kind of have a marketing brand, uh, brain. So I just love bouncing ideas around and I think we can all learn from each other. Thanks so much. Thanks, Dana. So I've got up on the screen some of our programs that we're offering at a discount for members of the Vale Valley Partnership. Uh, please feel free to get with us if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. Also, so that you're all aware, we're going to send out an email after this call as kind of an incentive to help us reach businesses in the area. We're offering two $100 gift cards to the Chop House, the Vale Chop House and the Beaver Creek Chop House. So we're going to send out a link to this, uh, basically an online survey. And if you guys would like to, we'd love to 
have some feedback on the call today. Also talk a little bit about, you know, what you guys are currently experiencing. So really, thank you for having us. I really appreciate the opportunity to chat, Lauren. Um, without further ado, if there's any questions as a whole, now would be a great time to, to discuss or we can go ahead and move forward. If anyone has questions, um, it looks I, like... I have one question. Okay, go I, ahead. Go ahead, yeah. I was just wondering if you could speak a little bit more to um, when you brought up social media and the 80-20 rule for informational posts versus sales posts, if you could speak a little bit more to that for us. I think, uh, you know, the 80, first of all, great question. I think when we talk about social media in general, consumer habits are what we really want to be the focus of the topic, right? When we talk about how people feel inundated with offerings versus data, for me, having a communal place, a place where people feel comfortable uh, communicating and being involved in things other than offerings, right? 20% of the time should be some sort of offering, whereas 80% of the time, at least in my professional opinion, should be focused on community-based conversation. Um, you know, as holidays come, most recently I was in Vail for the 4th of July. This is a great opportunity to have a conversation with your neighbors and your, and your customers about things that are happening within the community. Things, maybe this presentation, maybe, you know, um, Governor Polis' uh, you know, speech the other week. There's a lot of different ways that you can take it, but in my mind, the 80-20 rule should always be implemented when we talk about communicating with our customers. Any other questions? Not any that I think of. The one thing that I would add is I am also happy to follow up in, with an email with Anthony and Dana's contact information so that you guys have that. But we also can follow up with some of the resources. I know we've had quite a few businesses who are, um, you know, able to do the cleaning or, you know, have the signs on the floor or kind of whatever you need. So I will definitely follow up with some resources, you know, for all of you as well, if any of that is helpful. Um, but don't hesitate to reach out to us, you know, here at the partnership or to reach out to Spot On, you know, in terms of the content today. You know, but we are all, we're definitely here to support you and we would like to, to be able to be that resource and, you know, lean on us as needed. There's a lot of good information out there. So we are definitely trying to put it in a collective place for you. So I think in closing for me, uh, again, I just really appreciate the time. Um, as a small business owner myself, I think it's imperative that we utilize the resources within our networks. It's about helping one another navigate troublesome times and this new normal will pass, but it's not to say there won't be another new normal in the future. So leaning on businesses that can help you navigate those waters that are parts of the community, people that live and work in your neighborhoods and in where your business at, I think is very, very important. So again, thank you all very much for your time. My contact information is on the screen. We're going to send out a follow-up email and hope you guys have a great rest of the day. Enjoy the beautiful weather out there. Thank you so much for joining us, Anthony. And we will be doing some more webinars. So those can be found on the valleypartnership.com. Um, and then the one thing that just came through actually from our marketing manager was that Facebook, you know, is really reporting kind of that those best practices, the do it yourself, kind of the inspirational and humor posts are getting a lot of traction right now. So you know, make sure to promote your bids, but make sure to also just kind of keep that customer engagement like Anthony was talking about. Awesome. All right, guys. Thanks for the time. Hope we have a great rest of the day.